This is uh, Dr. Bharat Vaj Bharat Muthuswami, EE2900 Week 7 Lecture 1. So today what we're going to, what we're going to do, excuse me, is continue where we left off last time. That is recall, we were designing a ripple carry adder that is composed, that is going to be composed of instantiations uh, that is uh, generates uh, of, ah, sorry, the ripple carry adder is going to be composed of one bit adders cascaded using generates and we'll do that uh, probably this lecture if not definitely next lecture the output is going to be decided uh, i mean is going to be displayed using a seven segment decoder and we designed the seven segment decoder last time to use an integer input and where we left off was we tested that the design actually synthesized so today we're going to start by actually declaring a signal of type integer that we're going to obtain by using the input switches. So here is the syntax. And this syntax, I made mistakes when I was lecturing in class. So here it is fixed. So the issue was I basically used two integer first instead of declaring the standard logic vector to be unsigned and then converting it to integer. So there's my input integer. So what I'm going to do now is just pass in the signal input integer to my hex zero decoder. And let's now do the synthesis. But I'm going to go directly into uh, place and route and then just generate the programming file. So something, something to note as we are synthesizing that I've explicitly declared the input integer range to match my port range, of course. But the reason why I'm explicitly declaring a range when I know it is if I don't use this range here, then VHDL integer by default is 32-bit unsigned two complement. Now, on modern FPGAs, you may say that space is not a premium, but it's always good to be explicit when you're designing hardware or anything else for that matter. So I've made it explicit. Now it's fitting the design as you can see. And hopefully it'll get done soon. I have also powered on my DE1 board here and connected it to my computer, to my USB port. And obviously that cannot be recorded. But again, this is my emphasis on uh, like modular debugging that we first debug this module and make sure it's working before we go on to design the next module, which in our case is the one bit adder. So what I'm going to do now is it's almost done. So I was going to pause the lecture, but it looks like it's been fit. Uh, well, if we'll ever get past 98%. So once it does the fitting, oh yeah, the programming file generation should be pretty fast, hopefully. Yeah, this is the problem of running this, uh, running quarters on a tablet. But well, hey, it's I can't really record lectures on my Mac as well. I mean, I can, but anyway, there are other issues on my Mac. But let me get into the programmer, and I want to add the file. So it's going to be under output files. I want to add the SOF SRAM object file because we're going to program the FPGA using JTAG. So let me start and my FPGA is getting programmed and you can't see this, but here it is. My hex zero is showing zero. So, and it works very well. Seven, I'm testing till nine. And when I put anything higher than nine, my hex zero display turns off. So there. So now that we have confirmed that this module works, Uh, what I'm going to do now is I want to design my one bit adder. So let's do that. And I'm going to do this slightly differently in lecture as in lecture. In the sense in the lecture, I did pure structural. So as I'm thinking about this, I'm going to do uh, both structural and behavioral. The sense standard logic 1164.all use IEEE dot numeric underscore standard dot all. 
So we paste the component declaration. So we'll call this an entity. And entity. Well, let me just do this structurally. Let me not mix it with behavioral. Uh, architecture, uh, not entity. And entity one bit full adder. I can type it like that, but let me just do this one. one bit full adder. Architecture structural of one bit full adder is begin and structural. So uh, what's going to happen is I'm going to say my output I know is simply uh, the exclusive or of my inputs. But my carry, I believe it's going to be, uh, let's see, uh, see if I remember right, CI and XI or CI and YI or XI and YI. Let me just quickly, uh, so first of all, I have to save it in the right location. So this is obviously not called ripple carry adder. This is called uh, one bit adder. One bit adder. I follow the current project. There it is. And I made a mistake here. I just realized this should be YI and I'm forgetting a semicolon. Let me just do a quick uh, K map and confirm the second um, statement. So I can easily do that on my tablet. So I'm just going to open up a Windows journal. I'm not going to save this, of course, like in the sense I'm not going to um, post this, this Windows journal note online. So if I do a quick K map, so let's see, whoops, try to draw better grid there. So here is my carry out. It's a function of carry in xi, yi, so 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, and 1. So let me just do a truth table. I can directly go to the k map. It's 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. So this is 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. So my CN is going to be zero. No carry there, no carry there, no carry there, carry there. Uh, no carry there, carry there, carry there, and definitely carry there. So let's see, it's going to be zero, 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 one. So one, one, one. And as you can see, my CN, whoops. Do that since I kind of uh, I'm just not going to post this anyway. So uh, this is going to be uh, xi yi or ci xi or ci yi. So I was right in the sense if I go back to my ripple carry adder ci xi ci yi xi yi. That's what I got. So there that's designed. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to test my one bit full adder. How am I going to do that? Oh, I just call this one bit adder. So let's see, that's incorrect. So I call this one bit adder, but my name of my entity is one bit full adder. So if I try to, let's just compile this in the sense, since the name of the entity is different from the name of my file, I might get an, I should get an error. This is telling me that my programming chain has been modified. Do you want to save the changes? Yes, you can. I'm just going to save it like that, Ripple Carry Adder. And when I synthesize this, let's see if I get an error. Well, I haven't really instantiated this, so let me uh, stop this and instantiate this. So let's see. So let's just do a one bit adder now. So let's do one bit adder instance. So one bit full adder port map. So my, let's see, I think my carry x and so carry x and x in y in. So let's just do this. Let's use switch zero. Uh, switch one and switch two in that order, whatever it 
doesn't matter just testing this caddy out let me just do an LED and let's do actually let's call let's do that let's put that to LED 1 and let's put the sum to LED 0 and then we can do let me put the LED in here and in class I was actually using the hex displays and they were active low and stuff let's just use the LEDs oops so one down to zero All right let's synthesize that and I should get some kind of an error hopefully but if not I'll go back and change the name of the file because it shouldn't the name of the file should be the same as the entity name Or instance yeah it caught it found it but it's not good design practice so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this file okay um, go into my folder here well not my recording folder so ripple carry adder and where is my one bit adder so you can see it makes backup files I'm gonna delete the backup file it can choose, so let's call this one bit full adder. Um, so let's delete that. Uh, now let's re add this, and we are set to go. So, so as I add this file, one bit full adder. Uh, add notice, Coral Cordis puts this at the top, it's not the top though, also move it down right a little bit that's the hierarchy actually so let's go back to our cordis and there it is so what I usually do now is I select this right click make sure that this is the top level entity and let me go in here so yeah now everything is kosher so let's synthesize this again but before we do that uh, let's just think about actually let me synthesize this and we can test if this works I'm going to test this on the DE1 board. Uh, come on. Down here. There. Okay. So as we are, uh, as this is synthesizing, and of course you should pay attention to your compilation report and all the warnings, but I'm going to get back to this discussion that, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to synthesize, we want to implement a 5-bit unsigned ripple carry adder. Okay. So what do you what we should do is what we could do next is we could make five instances of this and then just define appropriate signals like those of you in 2900 who have done uh, the lab three which is the multiplexer decoder which has like um, multiple instances of muxes connected to multiple instances of decoders we can do the same thing here right however there's a more elegant way to do this and that is using generate statements that's what we are actually going to follow but for now, let me uh, make sure that this thing downloads, that is to the FPGA once it's synthesized and it works. Well, it's almost done, but I don't want to waste time in the sense we have only seven more minutes till we hit um, 20 minutes. So I want to pause the lecture, download it, and then continue. Okay, continuing. So it's all, I mean, the syn synthesis is done. So what we can do is we already have this chain saved, but let's just uh, download this again. So there it's downloading. And so right now I have my DE1 board. It's downloaded to the FPGA. So I'm testing and there, so it's working in the sense you can't see it. So I've tested the all possible combinations for one bit. So that's good. So now we know that this module here and this module here, they work individually. So now we can go back to our design goal of implementing the 5-bit uns unsigned triple carry adder. So in order to do that, I'm going to use these generates. But first, it's important for us to understand the picture, uh, pictorially, what we're trying to do. So what we are trying to do is we're going to, here's our full adder. Let's say we have five instances of it because we have basically five input bits one two three four five so here we have let's say this is our uh, so this is x0 y0 c0 
uh, let's see, how did I have it here? CXY, yep. So let's do this as C1X1Y1. This as C2X2Y2. C3X3Y3. C4X4Y4. Okay. So here are all the input lines. Okay. So let's say the input carry is zero. I'm not going to ground it. I'm going to put it to zero. This one now is going to be, let's say, SW0. This is obviously going to be SW5. Okay. This is going to be SW1, SW6, SW2, SW7, switch 3, switch 8, and then switch 4, switch 9. But since this is a ripple carry adder, let me declare the, I mean, the sum out the C next, which is going to be C1. But so here is what is called ripple carry adder. As you can see, the carry ripples from one adder down to the other. And obviously, this is this one of the slowest adder architectures, but that's fine. We are not trying to implement a carry look at adder here in, the, in terms of speed. What we're trying to do is understand behavioral BHDL specification. So this is C5. Let's call this carry out. Okay. And of course, I can send this carry into some other switch if I had an extra switch, but I'm using all 10 switches. You could probably send it to the uh, push buttons, but whatever. Okay. And those are all improvements you can try. S1, S2, S3, S4. So the sum here is going to go to is going to be bust into one standard logic vector, which we're going to send to our hex displays. But we'll do that uh, later, since in the next lecture, and I don't know why I'm saving this, because I'm going to post this online. That's, a, I guess, a habit. But anyway, uh, so it's probably going to crash. Yep, there it is. But here is the architecture that we're going to use. Now, what we're going to do, well, we actually tried to save, which is good. But then what we're going to do now is we're going to translate this picture into VHDL by using the idea of generates, OK? But to do that, first, I have to understand that these here, let me, I guess I should have used a different color, but whatever. So these carries here are all internal signals, OK? So what I'm going to do first is and I'll continue this like I have only like three more minutes, but we'll continue this next lecture. We'll get, we'll probably, even if we finish it next lecture, we'll continue the discussion of this generates next lecture. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare basically an internal carry signal, signal carry internal, okay, is going to be standard logic vector, okay. But let's do something. Uh, even more uh, robust in the sense. What I'm going to do is I'm going to declare a component. I guess I'll stop after I declare this component. A generic n bit full adder. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use something called generic, declare a bit length. Aha. So let's do this. Integer zero. Okay. And then I'm going to declare the port. So I'm going to have x in bits y in bits in standard logic vector bit length down to zero okay c in is some carry in standard logic c out oops I just took zero c out is out standard logic my sum bits and out standard logic vector bit length down to zero in the sense and just looking at this this should probably bit length minus one and let's make sure of that that is if i have a five bit yeah so it's i just fixed that so if i have a five bit adder obviously i go from zero to four on my inputs and my sum outputs. So there it is. Okay. So well, let me finish this. Semicolon 
uh, end component okay so this here and we are running out of time so what I'll do is this I'll continue this next time but for now the idea is I have placed this entire design as a component so this is very robust in the sense using generics we can resolve the number of stages in our ripple carry adder at synthesis time now we will again continue this next time but something important that this is n this bit link here is not a variable in the sense you can't download this on the FPGA and then set what bit link you want we have to a priori decide on the number of bits we're going to have in our adder and we will do so by using generates at the top level in the next lecture see you then